In this lesson, we talk about sequences. In item 1, we define sequences. A sequence is an ordered list of numbers. More precisely, a sequence is a function on the set of whole numbers. This means that each whole number n uniquely determines a term, term n, of the sequence. Note that, we have a convention that the initial term of a sequence is term 0 unless otherwise specified or undefined. Item 2 is designed for various notations representing a sequence. The solution is on the screen. In item 3, we define convergence and divergence of sequences. The fact in item 4 enables us to apply many techniques for evaluating the limits of functions at infinity to limits of series. We now work on question 5a. Let f of x be as shown. Then the values of the function f at all whole numbers form the given sequence. Using techniques we've learned, as x approaches infinity, the limit of the function is evaluated as shown on the screen. This means that the function values are arbitrarily close to the limit when x values are sufficiently large. Therefore the limit of the sequence equals the limit of the function. We now work on question 5b. Let f of x be as shown. Then the values of the function f at all whole numbers form the given sequence. Using techniques we've learned, as x approaches infinity, the limit of the function is evaluated as shown on the screen. This means that the function values are arbitrarily close to the limit when x values are sufficiently large. Therefore the limit of the sequence equals the limit of the function. We now work on question 5c. The inequality on the screen holds for any term n and the limit of the sequences on the two ends are equal. By the squeeze theorem, we have the required limit. We now work on question 5d. In this sequence, all terms have the same value of 1. Therefore the limit of the sequence equals 1. We now work on question 5e. In this sequence, the terms of the sequence are alternating between 1 and negative 1. So the limit of the sequence does not exist. In other words, the given series is divergent. We now work on question 5f. Let f of x be as shown. Then the values of the function f at all whole numbers form the given sequence. Using techniques we've learned. As x approaches infinity, the limit of the function is infinity. This means that the function values are arbitrarily large when x values are sufficiently large. Therefore the limit of the sequence equals infinity. In this case, we say the sequence diverges to infinity. We now work on question 5g. Motivated by the above questions, we can see that the limit equals 0 when r is strictly between negative 1 and 1. The limit equals 1 when r equals 1. Otherwise, the sequence is divergent. We now work on question 5h. We have seen the technique when we evaluate the limit of a function at infinity. Divide the numerator and the denominator of the sequence by n squared. We can find the limit. We now work on question 5i. We have seen the technique when we evaluate the limit of a function at infinity. Divide the numerator and the denominator of the sequence by n squared. We can find the limit. We now work on question 5j. We have seen the technique when we evaluate the limit of a function at infinity. Multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the square root expression. We can see the answer. We now work on question 5k. Let f of x be as shown. Then the values of the function f at all whole numbers form the given sequence. Using techniques we've learned, as x approaches infinity, the limit of the function is evaluated as shown on the screen. This means that the function values are arbitrarily close to the limit when x values are sufficiently large. Therefore the limit of the sequence equals the limit of the function. 
We now work on question 5L. Using the definition of factorials, we can see the inequalities on the screen all hold for any n. Moreover, the limit of the sequences on the two ends are equal. By the squeeze theorem, we have the required limit. We now work on question 5M. Using the definition of factorials, we can see the inequalities on the screen all hold for any n. Moreover, the limit of the sequences on the two ends are equal. By the squeeze theorem, we have the required limit.